I am super excited to say that the only reason I am able to even come out with this episode is the sponsor of today's episode. So if you haven't heard about Anchor, it is one of the greatest things to use to make a podcast. First, it's free. Second, they have all these tools that you can use to record, edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. I do it from my phone because it's much easier. I literally just bought one of those mics from the Apple store, plug it in, and now I just talk and it's great. Um, Also, you can distribute the podcast wherever you want. Anchor does that for you. You can It can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. I think Stitcher, so many other places, and you can make money from the podcast. And yeah, you can start it right away with an advertisement like this. So make sure you download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It is everything you need to make podcasts in one place. What's up, everybody? It's Dante, a.k.a. The Forensics Guy, and you are listening to The Forensics Experience, the podcast where we discuss topics in the speech and debate community with the world's most influential coaches, students, and alumni in the activity. And today, as usual, but even more so, I am super, super excited to be sitting with three fabulous, fabulous ladies who are a part of something amazing. I can't wait for them to introduce it to you. This is going to be one of my favorite episodes. I'm loving this so much. I'm loving it already. And we have, we barely started. Uh, so today I'm sitting with Ryan Hunt, Annika Seth, and Zara Chapel. Uh, they are with Beyond Resolved. Uh, so one of you feel free to take it away and tell us what you're doing for the speech and debate community and how Beyond Resolved is doing the same. Yeah, so um, Beyond Resolved was founded in 2018, primarily as just a website for women in debate to share their own experiences. But since then, it's um, expanded a lot. We now have something like 300 volunteers around the country, which is really exciting. And we're also focused on addressing way more issues than just the experience of women in debate. Um, Our organizational values, like from our website and our mission statement and everything are accessibility, community diversity, equity, inclusion, and intersectionality. And so there are a lot of different projects that we do that fit under that umbrella that hopefully help the community. That's awesome. Uh, That makes my day so much. Um, I think it's the main reason I think it's even relevant to have you on here. Uh, For those who, you know, obviously listen to my podcast, I I have episodes where I'm talking about all of these things, and I really want to continue to grow and continue to have these conversations about how we can make speech and debate more inclusive, accessible, equitable, and everything. It's very important, and if you can have these conversations, and hopefully this can inspire people to start to make changes uh, within their own community. Um, I think, you know, we like to think of speech and debate as one large one large like org, which it kind of is, you know, I mean, the NSDA, the CFL, or if you're one of those people that are also in the NCFCA or TLC, NITOC, whatever, they're all large organizations that do speech and debate, but it also stems from the small, the local, you know, the, the small random city that I have probably not heard of in Kansas City that has, you know, 200, 300 debaters that are trying to change their community. Um, We want to, we want to get those people to start off and hopefully make this grow into a larger thing. Um, So thank you so much for that introduction to Beyond Resolve, but I love uh, for you two as well to introduce yourselves and maybe tell me a little bit more that um, Zara might have missed potentially about Beyond Resolve. I can go next. Um, I'm Ryan and I'm the Vice President of External Operations. So Beyond Resolve, I think, has really made some huge strides this year, particularly in expanding our mission statement. As like Zara previously mentioned, we've been really focused in past years on particularly like women's experience in debate, but realizing pretty recently that like that doesn't encompass all of the struggles that all minority debaters face. And so something I'm particularly excited about is this year we decided to create initiatives um, that were focused and tailored on creating projects to help individual groups that are marginalized, particularly in the community, i.e. the race and ethnicity initiative, the LGBTQIA initiative, and we also have the like class and wealth initiative um, and some others. So those have been really exciting and have been tackling like some bigger issues that we haven't done in the past. So that's been very good. Awesome. 
Totally, yeah, no, so um, my name is Annika. I'm the Vice President of Internal Operations. And so Ryan oversees a lot of like the PR, the outreach and the social media presence for Beyond Resolved. I'm kind of more in charge of making things run within the organization. So overseeing the initiatives that Ryan was talking about as part of my purview. Um, but then I also, like you were talking about earlier with local communities, that's something that I'm personally really passionate about because I debate primarily on local circuits. I haven't really been to a ton of national events in my debate experience. And I think that's an also like very different perspective from a lot of national debaters because things like you know financial means and that kind of stuff also play in very, very heavily with your ability to travel to these like really big like college name tournaments across the country. Um, I, I love that you mentioned, you know, the, the cost, I think, I think the cost is so important and it's something that it's not talked about, I think enough, but it's, I think it's not talked about enough because like so many people, especially if you're going to national tournaments, they're, they're always the people who are probably, you know, they have more finances. They're not really worried about it. It's their own thing. Um, and it really started to dawn on me, um, on my TikTok for those who follow me there, like my literally the last two TikToks that I had that crazily blew up the one that has like almost like 50,000 views is one where I just literally said it was kind of over an audio and it was talking about how you know like oh my god another national champion that goes to a school where the kid makes more than like thirty thousand dollars or like or sorry where the school cost is like thirty thousand dollars or more like everybody started liking that and then you got all these comments they're like oh Harvard Westlake is typing, uh, blah, 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 you know, and not to, you know, not to, you know, throw any shade at any uh, bigger school. Um, I even commented on a student who commented on it and was like, uh, he said something along the lines of like, oh, I hate these, like the rich kids, they think that they are so great at it, but they're not and blah, blah, blah. And I, you know, I had to stop him. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was like, the it's it's not like the money isn't the problem like in terms of like the child can still be good they just have the extra resources like we like they have the extra privileges to be able to have the extra private coaches and the things of that nature and people like myself and beyond resolved they're able to offer opportunities to make it as close to equitable as possible like i see your thing about free coaching you're offering that i'm doing the same thing on my tiktok i have students who have you know filled out my form and they're saying like hey i want some free coaching um to just try to have the opportunity to get the leg up um and stay kind of equal you know with the um, with the debaters and the uh, speech and debaters as a whole that have more money and more finances and more resources. Uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if I can run a, you know, $12,000 two week summer camp, but, uh, but if I can do something close, then hopefully I can give them, uh, students those same resources too. But uh, I really appreciate the kind of, uh, allusion to like how we need to just figure out how to make, we need to make speech and debate something where no matter how much money you have, you can still feel like you still feel equal. You still feel confident, you know? Um, it's one of the few activities where there really aren't any, there's nothing that stopping you for the most part from a physical aspect, you know? Like if it was basketball, like, Yes, money can hire best coaches, but like I can't coach you to be six foot seven, you know? So, but like in debate, it's all starting. It's just your mouth. It's just your, you know, your intellect and your opportunity to uh, speak the truth and do it in a way that's uh, entertaining and, uh, and affect, sorry, in a way that's entertaining and like kind of, you know, uh, affecting everybody. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some of the, like you're, you're all doing so many things. Like you have a bunch of state chapters, I love it. Um, so you're really diving into that uh, thing that Annika said about kind of going in local, trying to hit, you know, as many uh, speech innovators as possible across a bunch of different ranks. Um, I see so many things here like your, uh, like LGBTQ. Um, so let's start off with that. Uh, Cause I, I feel like that really touches me, um, you know, being that and like what, what, what are you doing specifically for LGBTQ youth or coaches or, or I don't know, you know, whatever you're doing in that space? Um, I can probably start with this one. If anyone wants to jump in, like, please feel free. Um, so Ryan mentioned earlier our LGBTQIA plus initiative. And so that's a big part of how we're trying to address um, communities in that way to address like the intersectionality between um, all these different experiences 
We worked on a gender and language guide recently to um, like talk about ways to be more inclusive in the way that we speak and round about people from those backgrounds. I don't know, Zara and Ryan, if you want to add anything. That could be cool. Yeah, um, our research team is also really fantastic. Um, our director of research education, um, they just wrote um, a whole research paper on the transgender experience and debate, and we're going to publish that soon. So hopefully, knock on wood. Um, and that's just some really detailed research because like even studies that have come out recently about analyzing speaker points and gender disparities in debate haven't like always included the fact that perhaps not everyone is a cis man or a cis woman. And that's something that I think is a really important starting ground for a lot of other conversations. And I think something else that's really important with like all of these like individual initiative like groups of people we have um, is that we also have um, a mentor program which anyone can apply to um, for as a mentor, as a mentee, if they're a debater. Um, and if you're a junior in high school or older, you can apply to be a mentor. And this is just a way for students who don't feel like they're represented on their team or they don't know anyone like them in debate. Um, they can just meet someone like them and like have someone who they can discuss um, aspects of identity with, which I think sets us apart from like other debate mentorship programs that are more focused on just providing individualized coaching. We really want to make sure we're emphasizing that emotional support. That's awesome. I I love, wow, that, that makes me happy. Um, I love to hear that. There are so many things that um, I see you all are doing that's really changing the speech and debate space. It's just so great. Um, so I guess um, my next question really is about uh, figuring out um, well, I want to know a little bit more about you all. Uh, usually it would be a little different. It was just kind of individual, but it'd still be great to kind of know like all of you on a larger scale. Uh, what, which of the communities do you identify with um, that you want to speak on? Um, and then how do you think, you know, um, being that way in one of those identities um, has been an effect on your speech and debate experience. Also, I'm sure everyone's curious, like um, you all have some very important positions from vice president to all types of directors. Like, are you students? Are you college students? Are you high school students? Are you uh, are you 40 years old, but you look really young? I don't know. Uh, let us know. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're all high school seniors. Um, so I um, joined Beyond Resolved when it started my sophomore year, and then Ryan and Anka both joined like during the second year it ran last year. Um, so Beyond Resolved is still a relatively new organization, and there's always been this massive focus on it being student run, which is really important to us. But this year we did add an advisory board, which are um, adults who are like ranging from like current college students to people who've been coaching for a while, because we think it's important to have that perspective, especially as our organization grows. Um, yeah. So I guess personally, um, I identify as a woman and um, a person of color, sort of. I'm half Indian, half white. So I definitely have faced, like my experiences have been changed in debate, but in some way by that, but also I still have a lot of privilege in this activity because of um, how I appear, pretty white passing. Um, and I'm also someone who's struggled with anxiety in speech and debate a lot. and. That meant a super, super hard learning curve when I first joined debate because it would be hard to just get out a full sentence. And even in like national circuit breakgrounds, I've still like really struggled with that. Like I've run out of the room to avoid getting RFDs because I've felt like I couldn't handle it. And like, I've been teased by my teammates about this. And so it makes it hard um, at points, but I think that it's just, like, I love debate so much, so I keep doing it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, I'm Ryan, and like Zara said, I my freshman year, I did Beyond Resolve, but I wasn't, like, actively, like, working in the organization. I was actually in the mentor program, um, which was a really great introduction to, like, actually working in that organization. And then later, I, like, got more involved in, like, actually volunteer work and things like that. Um, but I also identify as a woman and I'm also a black woman. So I think that, and I think that like that has really shaped a lot of my experiences in the debate space, particularly because there are like none um, in public forum in particular, which is the type of debate that I do. Uh, and it, it does make it really hard when you're walking around tournaments and you don't see like anyone that looks like you. 
And I, I also understand that like as a person who is lighter skinned, I do have a privilege that I can appear white passing if, if I want to, um, which not everyone is like given, like has that opportunity. But I also think like over the, my debate experience, I've been trying to read more arguments that actually like pertain to like my identity and like also my partner's identity. Um, and so I think like by doing that, I've actually been able to like really start to like love the activity more because I remember in like sophomore year and stuff, it was just really difficult to be like, well, I feel like I'm, I'm at a disadvantage. Like I'm not winning rounds. People are telling me my hair is unprofessional. Like, and I, I don't know, like I can't change those aspects about me, but I can start talking about those aspects about me. Um, and I think that's particularly why I'm so excited about like the race and ethnicity um, initiative that we created this year because of all of the like wonderful things that they're doing in terms of like research projects in the debate community in general. And so, yeah. That's great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Annika. Um, like I mentioned earlier, like Zara and Ryan, I also debate PF. Um, I began as a freshman in high school and I got involved with the result as a junior when I went to my first bid tournaments on the national circuit. Um, I was never like super competitively successful. I like made ELIMS and like got a speaker award once, like it wasn't anything crazy. Um, but I think my experience on my team at Montgomery Blair in Silver Spring, Maryland, um, it's primarily men, almost entirely men. The people who joined and left the team um, for like the national circuit were all women who like would quit because of like the boys club mentality. I'm also bisexual and like comments like, oh, like, why don't you go ask like that guy or girl from like so-and-so team and then get prepped for us. Like, you know, stuff like that, I think was not very infrequent on my team. And like, I don't want to call anyone out. Like they're, they're making reforms and stuff, which is cool. Like, love Blair. Thanks everyone. If you mm -hmm. listen to this, you rock. Um, but it was definitely an experience that I think is pretty common to a lot of people who join national teams later in their career um, as debaters. Um, like being told you aren't good enough or you're like, you know, you're never going to make, you're never going to bid, etc. Um, like Zara said, I definitely have a ton of like class privilege too. Like I had the financial means to go to these tournaments. I know a lot of girls on like in my high school who wanted to compete, but if they were the only girl going and they had to buy an entire hotel room and they couldn't split it with someone else, that was a really big financial barrier for people. Um, because like, you know, if there are four guys going, they can all pay a quarter of a room share. If there's one girl and it's all male coaches, they can't really split. Um, so I think stuff like that definitely made me realize just how, um, how much disparity definitely exists in our community on all fronts. Um, and then I got involved with BR. So um, I really admire the work that this organization has been doing. Um, Zara has been here since the beginning. She's our president. She hasn't mentioned that yet, but she runs the entire thing. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, hello, Mrs. President. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so I am really interested that you mentioned the part about um, like hotel costs and things of that nature. It's weird because I never, uh, I never thought about it, but, um, but I guess the reason I never thought about it is on the positive side, you know, shout out to Brookfield East, uh, Steve Sexton, RIP, um, amazing coach. Um, but like one thing that he would, uh, or that like he would do was, you know, we just, split the cost you know no matter like no matter what everybody just split it equally like i never thought about charging a student specifically like this cause because they were the only one in the room like we have had you know times or tournaments where you know like i remember um nationals in florida uh namita shout out namita if you're listening hey um but like she was in our own room because she was the only uh girl that qualified for nats and she paid the same amount that everybody else paid, you know, it was just e equally split, no matter if you had to share a room or not. So um, that's interesting, um, just to kind of even think about that. But um, I, I think the only reason I even mentioned that is because I think on the grand scheme of things, if you're listening, if you're a coach, uh, it's much better to just, you know, make everything at least equitable in some way and have everybody just pay the same amount if they do have to pay, um, which it would be nice if people didn't have to pay. I wish the schools valued art uh, a little bit more, but that's a whole another story for a different podcast. But uh, but if you but if they do, then, you know, make sure it's equal. Um, I think it's uh, 
unfortunate to have you know the girl pay for an entire room or even on the opposite side if you're a boy on a team of all girls then it was still the same effect just make sure it's splitting is equal for everybody uh definitely um so uh i another thing that really kind of presses on me um is the kind of disability and mental health thing um that you all are doing i see that you're making initiatives and strides in that as well um i'd like to hear a little bit more about that um it's interesting for myself just because um you know i am uh like I struggle with a lot of things like panic disorder, anxiety, things of that nature as well. Um, so I've tried to, you know, figure out different ways to, uh, you know, almost accommodate myself because, you know, um, especially even being younger uh, or when I was younger, the those things weren't, those things didn't exist and they still really don't exist, but it's really awesome to see, you know, uh, even in my home state of Wisconsin, more people are starting to figure out ways to make things um accessible for everybody and have these opportunities where you know like like we're answering these questions like oh what are we going to do if a student has a panic attack in the middle of their speech um how are we going to create a space to make students feel comfortable when there's thousands of students roaming around in a school you know on a given saturday um are there small spaces where students can feel more comfortable if they need to and all types of things like that um and it's tough because there are there's there's a lot of resources um that have to make that happen um but um so i'm curious like in your in your strive for trying to uh, tackle the whole disability mental health thing, are you just focusing on like students? Uh, have you been talking to like coaches, judges, tournament directors? Like, what's going on here, and how are you able to um, try your best to make sure that this is also a great space for students who may have to deal with those um, unfortunate things as well? Yeah. So. One of the main things that our Disability Mental Health Initiative has been working on is analyzing what the NSDA considers to fall under ADA accommodations, because one of the things can be interpreted as literally like if you have ADHD, you aren't allowed to like take medicine that helps you focus during a debate round because that would be considered an unfair advantage. So it's just doing a lot of research into what is like legally okay in a competitive like student event and also like what can be changed to help students more. Um, a lot of the other work that the initiative does is kind of just again in our blog posts in the anti-bias training that we're working on putting out for judges. Um, we talk a lot about how things like eye contact, um, stuttering, um, like even hand gestures can be represented in certain ways that seem unprofessional when really they might just be something that someone can't really control. Um, another thing we've been working on is a guide to running a like, team in a manner that helps all of the students. So an inclusive way, but also if you don't know debate and you want to start debating at your school, where do you even get started? And so I can talk more about that later. But one of the things that we've been making sure to include is how can you make sure that the team environment doesn't get really toxic? And how do you make sure that everyone feels comfortable in such a like such a tense activity? Awesome. Uh, I really like that you talked about the kind of like judges talking about things that a student might not be able to control. I, I'm really interested in like the work that you might be trying to do to fix that um, and the work that others are trying to do because I think that's so tough, you know, this is like, in this essence, you know, especially from I feel like more of a speech side than the debate side, but you can also say it in kind of debate too. But from a speech side, especially, like if you're doing something like poetry and you notice that this student keeps like doing this thing with their hand, like it's tough for a judge to really know like, oh, I didn't even think about the fact that that could be uncontrollable. But also, you know, how do I know if it is controllable or not? You know, like I still wanna try to judge as fairly as possible with that um, and try to make it so that, you know, every student receives like the equal, you know, amount of judging and things of that nature. It's it's a it's a really tough one. Um, I don't have the answers to that and I'm, uh, I'm sure you might not 100% have the answers either, but I'm really glad that you all are kind of figuring out and uh, trying to answer those questions because there are so many, there's so many small things that we don't think about. Um, and 
I am super excited to hopefully one day be 90 years old and look at the speech and debate uh, platform and see that, whoa, this has changed significantly since I have been doing this podcast. Um, so I'm, yeah, very glad of what you all are doing. Um, you said you said you wanted you said you were going to talk about something later. So I mean, can you can you bring that up now? Because I really I do I want to hear a little bit more about that. Um, and, and like this would be a great next part for the conversation. Yeah. So one of the things that we've been working on is a guide on how to start and run a debate team. So we include things like how to find a teacher to sponsor you, how to raise money, how to use NSDA's website and tab room to register for tournaments, how to run practices, including a bunch of different drills, how to choose what kinds of events are best for your team, how to like just figure out what tournaments to attend and just things about tournament procedure that aren't inherently obvious if you haven't done like the one clap rule, for example. And then also just how should you be a good team captain and like how can you make sure that your team is having important conversations about the community. This is something that um, Spencer Burris Brown and Lauren Kim, just wanted to make sure I got their names right. Um, they started this, um, they've been working really hard on it, but it's really great because we have so many volunteers, like everyone's just able to write a little bit about what they know. And then at the end we have like hundreds of people who are willing to help people get into debate and do it in an inclusive way. Um, so we're just, now we're focusing on polishing up everything. Um, it might be out by the time this podcast comes out, hopefully. Okay. Um, we're working on a section all about online debate as well, like how all of the different technology platforms work, um, how you can just make the most of an online tournament, how that can be used to your advantage, because um, we've had a lot of conversations about online debate actually within our organization. And on the one hand, it's great because tournaments end up being like cheaper on, mm -hmm. for the most part, even though some tournaments still charge hundreds of dollars for entry fees. Um, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, ha but like at, at the very least, it might be easier to get a judge or a coach to watch you or like to help you out. Um, and how it's like a lot easier for people to compete in larger tournaments. Um, but on the other hand, there are a lot of problems that come with online debate, obviously like internet connection and technology access is mm -hmm. really, really, um, like just not equal. Um, so one of the things we've been working on through our Wealth and Class Initiative, um, Chelsea has been really great with this, using um, donations of ethernet cables and microphones and just any technology debaters might need. We actually have a form on our website where you can request that and we'll send it to you. Just, oh, wow. we're taking, we're doing our best to meet every request um, that we can. So far we've been able to send out like a few ethernet cables, but we're working on expanding to other technology. And then another thing we're working on more big picture is just getting more sponsors like on a consistent basis from like businesses and law firms so that we can provide just pay tournament entry costs and pay coaching costs for teams who need that. And that's something that's a bit more tricky because it obviously requires a larger donation and it also requires us to like have access to teams who like might not be as involved with like the debate community enough to like know that something like Beyond Resolved exists. Um, that's a um, that's a good point. Um, but that that is ah, that's so amazing. That is refreshing. Um, I'm sure a lot of other people listening to the podcast also just sighed. They're just like, wow, this is great that you are offering so many things from like donating materials to like helping with the cost of going to tournaments and everything. It's just absolutely amazing. I love it so much. Um, yeah, thank you. Wow, thank you so much for doing that. It's just great. Um, I I had to I had to romance a little bit at the whole, you know, like how are you? I know, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely throwing some shade, but I'm not gonna pick any schools and throw them shade yet. But like, there's no way somebody should still be charging like $150 for an entry. And when it's literally just a glorified skill share presentation, like nowadays, like it's not, it's just a video. Like you are accepting a video. Like I can see it's, if you, oh man, it's just crazy. I don't know, um, but one day we'll be able to work on it. Uh, and uh, I guess in the grant at, at this point, you know, uh, some, some debate people are probably really happy. Their pockets are getting a lot bigger. Um, but um, so 
like looking at like the different resources, I love that you have, you know, your your scholarships, you're doing all types of things, judge training, everything. Um, man, wow, you're doing so much from coaches to students to judges. It's just it's just amazing. Um, I I think one space um, that might not have been touched that people might be interested to know if you're doing anything in that space is like the uh, like for parents. Um, like what res do you have any resources for parents that could be uh, useful as well and uh, what are you giving them? So I think I can talk about this one a little bit. So particularly like right now, I think the judge training aspect of this kind of encompasses a lot of like parent things too, particularly because parents are now more than ever are really yeah. becoming judges for their kids who, because tournaments are becoming more accessible when they're online, which can be a good thing, but can also be kind of unfortunate in terms of like, well, now that they have to learn how to judge, which is why I think that our judging training that like we're developing right now is really, really important. And I think is going to be really helpful um, moving forward. It's on our website, you can complete a Google form to basically just say like what you want to see in judge training. And I think that this could particularly apply to parents is if students wanted to ask their parents who are judging in a tournament and upcoming, like what are some things that you need to know um, or what that you want to know about how to judge around? Because I think that everyone really has their own like paradigm of how they judge rounds. And I think it it's really important to kind of like sort of condense that and make it a lot easier for like parents to understand the activity that their kids are doing and how to best support them in that. And I think you can also like accomplish that through judge training, um, which I think is really cool so yeah that's awesome um there there are two other things that you are doing that i think is really great that even if i don't ask questions about it, i just want to mention that they have it um your coaching database where you have like a centralized list of like coaches that are looking to be hired i think that's awesome um and then um also uh probably my favorite right now uh that i'm looking at is the clothing drive i think this is so cool um i remember having this conversation with um, a judge from, or sorry, a coach from like New York. And we were talking about this really cool idea. We were like, we should like figure out a way to see, like get a bunch of donations of suits and dresses and things of that nature and like create it and then distribute them and stuff like that. I love that you're already like on that and it's amazing. Um, so if you have, you know, for anybody who does have, I don't know if they can send them to you or something like that, but if you have those extra suits, dresses, and you're like, oh, I'm 19 now, I'm not doing speech and debate anymore, but I know somebody can get some great use out of these. Feel free to donate them. Uh, if you're an adult and you're just like, I'm done with the interview process, I'm retired now, or whatever, I don't know, donate them, uh, you know, give them away, and uh, it could definitely be used for a great purpose uh, such as this. So I am, yeah, super excited and love that this even exists. Uh, it makes my day. Um, <laughs> So um, go ahead. Sorry, just um, about that, um, currently, um, as of October 25th, we're still working on a way to distribute things in a way that is like safe, given the pandemic. True. So um, we're currently not accepting donations, but um, okay. check back on our website. Um, it's just under the resources tab. If you click on clothing drive, we'll post information there as soon as we have it. Awesome. So yes, make sure you go to that tab and um, they're not doing anything right now, but keep the clothes. Don't just, don't throw them away. No need to throw away the clothes, okay? Uh, make sure you keep them. Um, but things will open up soon and it'll be a great place to donate. Um, so yeah, I, man, I'm super excited that I got the opportunity to talk to you all. Um, I definitely don't want to hold too much of your time, but I'm really glad that we got the opportunity to just kind of talk about everything that you're doing in the speech and debate community. It's so amazing and it's just, it is the best thing ever in my heart to just see uh, young students that are coming up and making a super big difference in this community. These are some of the differences that people listening right now, they're just like, wow, I wish I would have made this or I should have made this or something. It doesn't matter now because it's happening and this is a great chance for us to give a hand clap and just be like, wow, this is happening and we are super excited. Um, I totally know there are a ton, a multitude a true plethora of people that are just proud of everything that you're doing and they love all the opportunities and the resources that you have. Um, and uh, there might be some people that might not like what you're doing. And I'm sorry if they go to a private school and now they have competition, so whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much for everything that you're doing. 
Uh, once again, um, just reminding you who's on the episode today, we got Zara Chapel, we got Annika Seth and Ryan Hunt, three amazing, amazing uh, debaters that are changing the world. So uh, yeah, feel, feel free to reach out to them. Um, and from Zara, can you let us know how can they get in touch with uh, you or, or any of them and like Beyond Resolved and everything? Yeah, so um, we're probably most responsive over Instagram and Facebook. Um, our Instagram is at Beyond Resolved and our Facebook is just Beyond Resolved. Um, our email is contact.beyondresolved at gmail.com. If you want to get involved um, in a more sustained fashion, applications are open for a free coaching service and mentorship. They're rolling when, no matter when you're listening to this. If you want to get involved with those, you can. We also um, have a lot of state chapters are always accepting volunteers there. Um, all of our initiatives that we mentioned, if you want to get involved with any of them, there's a form on our website. Just fill it out and we'll add you to the Slack and everything. Um, if you want to get involved as an adult with Beyond Resolve, we have two options. We have the advisory board, which um, we're looking to expand to a couple more people. Um, we have conversations like two weeks to a month um, for an hour, just about what's going on with our organization, what directions we can take to help us um, help better the debate community. We also have an alumni council. So if you just wanna like be a resource for students who are helping run, like let's say, putting out resources for public forum. If you just wanna help out with that, we can also connect you with the students who are doing that and you can serve as a resource for them. There's no time commitment for like the adult positions. We understand that everyone's really busy. We're just happy that there are so many coaches who are willing to help out. Um, there are also just a lot of opportunities to help out that we might randomly post on our social media. So keep an eye out for that. Like the other week we hosted a panel talking about how you can use speech and debate to help um, pay for college or use it on your college application or even just what, what speech and debate is like in college and we had some really great volunteers answer those questions the recording should be up on our website soon about that so yeah and if none of that really speaks to you um we just have a form on our website called ask beyond resolved and you can ask us literally any question totally anonymously and we'll post our answers to that as well oh, that is awesome uh, so make sure you get it make sure you get in touch with them uh, look at those resources. They're all amazing um, and definitely be a part of it. Uh, so as, as you heard, if there's any way that you want to make an impact or be a part of the community, then, then please do so. Um, so uh, as usual, if you know how to, if you want to stay in the conversation, feel free to DM me or uh, hit me up on TikTok, Instagram, those are probably the places I'm most accessible on. Um, and just, yeah, stay in the conversation. Um, this is obviously really great as we're making more impacts and in interviewing more people to, um, that are changing the whole realm of speech and debate. It's absolutely amazing. So once again, another big thank you to Beyond Resolve for coming on the show. It's been really great to have them. Um, and yeah, uh, make sure you give this uh, podcast five stars. Like, go to the iTunes store um, or your pod. It, well, it depends on where you're listening, but regardless, go to the podcast app and rate it five stars. I'm in the Apple Podcast app. It will really help me get um, higher on the education rank, uh, specifically with the Speech and Debate podcast. Um, subscribe to me wherever, do whatever you need to do, and stay in the conversation and keep listening. Uh, thank you again, and peace out.